With all the crazy things going on on planet Earth these days, and the zombie apocalypse on the verge of happening any minute now, it seems like our next best option is to start a colony on Mars. But is this possible? And what kind of technology will we need to make it all the way over to the red planet? From terraforming Mars to special suits required, here are 10 things we need for colonizing Mars. Number 10, getting there. With our technology today, we can send a probe into outer space and have it reach Mars in 942 hours or 39 days. Later, we'll discuss the kind of technology for people to withstand the journey there. For right now, we'll explain the technology needed. A California-based company, Aerojet Rocketdyne, was given a $67 million contract to design and test an advanced solar electric engine that could get us there in about eight months. Not only would these possibly get us to Mars, but revolutionize space travel as we know it. These systems are supposed to take solar power and convert it to electricity, which would accelerate ions out of a nozzle and generate a thrust. These engines are much more efficient than chemical-based rockets and require much less fuel. It certainly seems like the universe could be the limit for space travel someday. Another technology is going to be needed to get us there and land us safely. These are known as magneto shells. What these would do is force an aerodynamic drag which will slow down the aircraft before it reaches Mars' atmosphere. The magneto shell deploys a unique magnetic field that contains magnetic plasma. Number 9. Hibernation Chambers You ever fall asleep on a plane or in a car and wake up in a new state somewhere? Well now imagine that feeling, but instead, you're on an entirely different planet. Now more than ever, NASA is trying to prepare us for a trip to Mars and funding has already started for the new project of human hibernation. Can humans really be put into a state of hibernation like other animals do, such as bears? A space habitat needs to be formed that will help induce astronauts fall asleep. The ideal interior would carry 100 people, be able to feed and hydrate them while they're sleeping, give them a bath occasionally, and supply enough oxygen for the entire trip. The astronauts would also end up becoming ill just from the fact that there's less gravity for such a long period of time. The hibernation chambers should also be creating some type of artificial gravity to reduce the negative health effects. Reality seems to be catching up with science fiction and a company called Spaceworks has been put in charge of creating these. Number 8. Breathing Oxygen is absolutely necessary for us to survive on Mars once we've made it there. This poses as one of the biggest and most obvious problems with starting a colony on Mars. The land is quite hostile, and there's quite a few reasons why we shouldn't even come here. Without oxygen or a proper suit, which we'll get to later, you'd probably die only within a few minutes from hypothermia and suffocation. There's gonna have to be a way to actually farm oxygen, which is something we probably never even thought about doing before. This method would include bacteria and algae to use as fuel to pump out oxygen onto the surface or into living quarters as demonstrated in this illustration. The best way would be to go into arid regions of the Arctic where soil and weather conditions are the most similar and see how it works underground. The other method would include bringing massive amounts of oxygen tanks with you into a different spaceship and rely on NASA to send shipments every month or so. Obviously, this one would be much riskier and more expensive in the long run. Number 7. Settling Location Finding the suitable area on Mars to colonize will also become an important factor when humans finally decide to escape planet Earth. Researchers spotted a depression in a crater on the surface of Mars that some scientists believe could have the perfect ingredients for life, and not just for humans. It's what's known as the Hellas Depression, and it was most likely formed by a massive asteroid which would have wiped out any life on this planet. Recently, they were able to capture these elevation models to show how the depth of the crater descends. The site was first located in 2009 when researchers came across these crack-like figures on the surface. On Earth, these types of geological formations would have extremely high temperatures. On Mars, however, they could host life. It seems like it could host water as well, heat and nutrients, according to Joseph Levy. Could there possibly be a place on Mars that's suitable for life that we just haven't found yet? Could this be one of them? Number 6. Space Suit in order to achieve a massive feat in human history, a massive feat in space technology needs to occur. This would need to be worn all the time unless they were underground or safe from radiation. Basically, until we terraform Mars, which we'll get to later, 
The Z2 space suit that we see here is the best thing we got. Living the rest of your life in a suit certainly isn't an attractive part about moving to Mars, but hey, maybe it won't be so bad. This thing provides essentials such as breathing and temperature regulation. There will be different suits for different tasks. The Z2 will be made out of lightweight alloys and are high in durability, which is good for tasks that require a lot of movement. However, it's preferable that it's close to refillable resources. Other larger suits like we see with the extra vehicular mobility unit will be better for exploration from the large amount of resources it can store, but mobility is limited. Number 5. Food and Water The essential first goal for food on Mars would be to establish a primitive greenhouse which would be able to accommodate the food requirements for the initial 100 people. The soil on Mars is extremely toxic and certainly won't be able to grow anything for the moment. NASA does have extensive experience in hydroponics which will help the task of creating a greenhouse. Other scientists are looking to ways to genetically engineer crops so they could deal with large amounts of radiation and low air pressure. As for water, Mars does have a considerable amount of water that currently takes the form of ice. There's evidence to suggest that Mars had plenty of liquid water on it at some time, and there's even some evidence to suggest that it does flow seasonally after they captured this image. If somehow we find a way to harvest this water, chances for survival will greatly be increased. Number 4. Your New Martian Home Living on Mars has always been a dream of the future. We really need to actually get there before we start thinking about this one, but hey, it hasn't stopped the London Royal Observatory from coming up with a good idea and designing a home. They envision these dome-like structures that we see here to be your future home on Mars if we begin to colonize the Red Planet. Is this what humanity's first home could look like on Mars? The dome structure has been made using materials as close as possible to those found on the Red Planet. It's a little bit more simple than you'd think, and it sort of does take a similar design to homes of the first ancient civilizations on Earth, strangely enough. It is by no means a fancy mansion, but they are made of recycled spacecraft parts, with enough utilities to get by. It features a double airlocked entrance that will help prevent any kind of radiation. This would also hopefully protect colonists from Mars' unforgiving, freezing temperatures. Other items like silverware can actually be 3D printed. Number 3. Mars Rovers In order to successfully colonize Mars, being able to explore the land is absolutely necessary. Using people is probably the best way, but Mars Rovers will ultimately be the most efficient way and will help us conserve not only resources, but reduce the risk of any more human casualties. The technology for Mars Rovers will continue to advance, and in 2020, NASA plans on launching a new rover into space. It will conduct unprecedented research and exploration of the Red Planet like we've never seen before. They've already seen what the Mars Curiosity rover was capable of, and they were impressed nonetheless. This rover should hopefully be able to store soil samples of Mars, then potentially bring it back to Earth. This will be a critical step before we decide to send humans there. With a vast variety of instruments on this rover, it could give us the crucial information we need about the Red Planet, and where would be the best possible landing place. Number 2. Electricity Generation when we finally get to Mars, we're going to need electricity in order to sustain human civilization. The most obvious source of power isn't gasoline, it isn't oil, and it isn't nuclear power initially. We're going to need solar power at first, and lots of it. Power is absolutely necessary. It's what we fight wars over. We'll need it for many different reasons, and experts have been thinking about this. Solar energy on Mars is a little bit more difficult here than it is on Earth, since we're further away from the sun. At the equator of Mars during the middle of summer, it's only going to generate about 60% of the power as it would on a normal day on Earth. Dust storms pose additional problems on any given day, and it can result in a blackout. After some solar panels have created enough energy, nuclear power is probably what it will come to since solar power won't be quite as plentiful. It's unclear exactly how motors of transportation will be powered since there's no signs of gasoline on Mars, but some of the rovers have actually been known to operate on plutonium. And number 1. Terraforming Mars Mars has an abundance of water that's just waiting to be melted. In order for it to melt, we need to change the conditions on Mars so it's just a little bit warmer. There's a few proposals to do this. For one, we need to get more greenhouse gases over there, such as methane and carbon dioxide. Ammonia is another powerful gas that should be considered as useful in changing Mars' climate. There's been quite a bit of it actually in our atmosphere that could be transported here. It is an atmosphere like ours for it to transform into an Earth-like planet. Creating a greenhouse effect on Mars would keep it warm enough to sustain life, create plants, which will then return provide us with oxygen for us to breathe. 
Some scientists are still rather firm to believe that Mars is located within the habitable zone of our solar system, and all it needs is an atmosphere like ours in order to transform it into an Earth-like planet. This will be the ultimate thing for humans to do and make us an interplanetary species. So which one did you think was the most interesting? Be sure to leave us a comment in the comment section and subscribe for new videos every day.